Okay, hello people. Um, so, this is actually my second attempt at this. Uh, I guess I'm going to be calling it P-Hub because I searched online and apparently there is a P-Hub channel, but he is inactive and I would probably be able to take over that with my own thing. So, yeah, um, my first attempt was basically a poor setup where my video was like me, but really far to the right of the <laughs> like camera like this. It was me talking like this the whole time, so I'm trying to be more interesting for people. But at the same time, I want to be boring because I don't know if anyone I know is watching this and then they'll be like too into it. I don't want them to be, so I want them to be so bored that they'll close it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out. But since it's just me here, it might be that boring. So anyways, um, I had this comment that I like to read and I need to find it now. So here's some ASMR clicky noises. Um, I think it was this one. So there was a, I'm already screaming already. So anyways, um, there was a user by the name of happiness that said, you could share about your Asian American experience, your college career journey, anything really. I'm here for you as a person because someone as genuine as you is a rarity on YouTube. And I was like, but <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, uh, I think the people I'm subscribed to are pretty genuine. Maybe they just haven't found them yet. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, sure, I'll do one. I think the Asian is Asian American experience one is pretty interesting, but mine is, I don't know, I'm pretty boring and I hate my voice and everything, so let's see how this works out. And I'm pretty sure that the other things that you think would be part of my Asian American experience would be fitting in here, but it would probably be a better explanation in another video topic or something. So yeah. Um, so I had written out all these notes just so that I don't just keep talking on a whim and leaving like really huge chunks of silence of me thinking because I'm a much better writer. But I don't know, you probably, someone's probably going to be like, oh yeah, well I read your blog and you're pretty crappy at writing too, so I don't know. Because one time I got called a Jeffree Star wannabe or something, I was like, if I could be a demon looking clown and be living like a Kardashian, I totally would, but yeah. For me, makeup isn't like a fun thing, it's more of a thing to hide your imperfections and so when it comes to like creating content for that, it, I don't find it enjoyable. And at the same time, when you're used to covering up all your flaws and then you just film yourself like me bare face right now and see all the flaws, then you feel super ugly. So. I'm at that point where I'm like, whatever, if you don't like me, then just find someone that looks better because this is how I look. So for the, for the, I guess, <laughs> for um, when you do have something important, I think the only thing you really need is like a good concealer palette, which I need to buy a new one because mine is pretty old. I still use it though, so, but that's not really often either since I don't really go out much. <laughs> it's basically for like, if I do have an interview to go to, then I can pretty much touch up my eyes and look less tired because I sweat a lot everywhere else. So I don't want them to be like, oh, you're, you're perspiring, but you're perspiring white. Why is that? So anyways, the topic was my experience growing up, I guess. Uh. So for those who don't know, I'm pretty much sure a lot of you don't, but I'm the oldest child and I have a really bratty brother that I don't get along with. Um, if you want to wonder why, I don't know. It's just, he acts like a baby and he's 27, so. And a lot of it is because I feel like my parents don't raise him or like force him to experience the things I experience. 
so he's very like sheltered but yeah I don't want to be too like into it um, and I'm from the Los Angeles area so that's not a surprise because there's such a big population of Asians here I'm especially where I'm from it's no surprise because a lot of the other well-known Asian youtubers are from this area which is the San Gabriel Valley and that's where I'm grown up from like with a very normal it's really normal to see other Asians around so um, as much as I like to say that I grew up as the only Asian in a like white area in, like in Kansas or something that's not my case but thinking about that there's like um, this new comic book that Jean Luen Yang wrote for DC and it's I think it's basically that where it's like a white neighborhood with an Asian family and they were like targeted by the KKK I think I'm not sure I have it I just haven't read it yet I'll talk about it probably through my Instagram stories eventually but I don't know maybe I'll forget like that one time I forgot to like upload the whole like Wonder Woman and the Chinese Wonder Woman cross thing but uh, like oh my hype is over I'm gonna stop so having this condenser mic is like great but like every small noise it catches so I don't know how people make podcasts or I don't know my maybe my equipment is not what they use but yeah so my area is basically very Asian if you didn't know because back in the early 90s there's a lot of housing dis housing ugh, housing discrimination and pretty much um, the neighborhoods would like pack together the white neighborhoods would pack together and not allow other races to buy homes except for like two specific areas in Los Angeles which is like South LA and East LA and then um, in like the 60s or 50, the late 50s in the 50s or 60s the Japanese community that was already existing here like asked developers housing developers if they would be allowed to like move into uh, one of the major Asian cities in LA County which is Monterey Park and that's where it started expanding and now this is like this really huge concentration of Asians and Latin people in the San Gabriel Valley so I grew up with many Asians and Latin people, which explains my like like for reggaeton, which you listen to like the music I put on Instagram. Um, yeah, so if you didn't already know, if you even looked through my Instagram, you probably know that I'm from LA. Um, but yeah, contrary to what people think from the international places, not everyone here is beautiful. And yeah, I don't know. Like if you go to Hollywood, that's that's also part of LA, but not everyone's beautiful there either. Going back to where I'm from, there are also like very affluent neighborhoods in here. So because like part of it was that the San Gabriel Valley was advertised as like an Asian Beverly Hills apparently in like Hong Kong and Taiwan. So there are very like affluent neighborhoods, but I'm not from there. From, from any of them. I'm near them, but yeah, my parents are very working class. My dad for most of his life was basically like the people who work at the markets and like gut your fish and descale them. Um, and now I'm in a process where I'm working with animals, so I feel like it's a genetic thing where, where I was meant to work with animals eventually. <laughs> um, my mom's like a seamstress that got like laid off and then I had to find her a new job, which is similar to being um, a sweatshop shop worker but not in a way so that her job is more safe but I don't know about that right now but she's still working so that's good to hear but yeah my dad's in retired now so all he does is like sit at home watch TV and walk outside every 15 minutes and then he like basically looks out the window every 15 minutes as well like hoping for my mom to come home um, but yeah, my parents aren't very, uh, I don't know how to say this. So, 
when you guys ask me like oh do you have a boyfriend or something and like things like that when you look at my parents you can tell they didn't marry for love so being in a relationship to me is very important in the sense that it has to mean something because when i look at my parents my mom's not very like happy and then my dad's just whatever because i don't know i feel like he's hard to read so yeah and then he like drinks a lot of alcohol which i find very unattractive so be because i grew up seeing him drink a lot i don't find that appealing and then he used to smoke a lot too so i hate <laughs> the smell of smoke but he's quit that so yeah that's my parents they also have like an eight year age gap <laughs> which is which was odd when I grew up, but then because my classmates had more like close and range age parents, but then one of my friends later on ended up marrying someone that's like seven years older than her, so life works in mysterious ways. So as a kid, I didn't really fit in with like the popular kids because I, I wasn't really cool since I didn't have cool things since my parents could only really like afford to put a roof over my head and feed me and have electricity. So I pretty much like stuck myself with the nerdy kids because they're like accepting, but I wasn't as smart as them, so I didn't really fit with them either. Um, and then in high school, I went to a high school where most of my middle school didn't go to so like pretty much three-fourths of everyone I knew was already gone and I basically just kept in touch through AIM but then even that like people start not reciprocating so yeah I was pretty much a loner in high school and that explains my like awkwardness um, and then I took a lot of like a lot of my humor comes from Kathy Griffin because she's like this she has like this vengeance about her about like I'm gonna be so damn funny that you're gonna regret knowing me so when you see me like work really hard on my body and try to be funny and appealing it's because I'm I have that same mentality I remember like very vividly like one day in school where it, before we had PE, we would go to PE class, but there's like a seven reading time or something. And I would sit by myself and just read to myself because I didn't have really have friends. So this one girl was like, oh, would you like to join me and my friends? I was like, I was like, sure. Like I knew her, but I didn't really like know each other enough to like really be a part of them. But that was really nice of her to like let me in. But yeah, I don't talk to her anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I guess. I have this thing about me where I'm like a nice person, but people don't really like want to keep me around or something. I don't know. I, I think I'm okay, but I don't know how other people feel. So yeah, a lot of me in high school was basically just like getting by. I wasn't like super smart, but I wasn't super stupid at the same time. Um. I didn't really know what I wanted to major in either, so when we like took like that career class or something, I was like, I have so many interests. I thought I was going to be like a graphic designer at that time. I had like Photoshop on my computer, but my computer was like really slow. I would just make like little banners for myself on for forum, for K-pop forums because I was like really into BOA at the time. and. I thought they looked so awesome, but now it's like I look at them and I cringe. But yeah, since I knew I wasn't that great at school, I wasn't gonna get accepted into like a school I wanted. So I never took my SATs or my ACTs. Part of that is because I didn't want to like ask my parents to drive me to those testing places because I didn't want them to like get out of work early or something because I know that whatever they lose out on that day is very important to them. 
So I knew I was going to go to a junior college for sure. But then I went there for like five years, which I wasn't expecting. But at the same time, I graduated when there was like the recession of like 08. So yeah, I just, that was like a point where the job outlook was also kind of depressing. So like I knew I was just going to take my time with school. Eventually, I graduated. I transferred to another university and graduated. I majored in political science because that was the only like subject I was interested in that wasn't STEM related because I knew I wasn't good at like math and science. But yeah, and during that time, I also got my first phone <laughs> at the age of like 19 for my first job. And it was a flip phone. But yeah, before that, my parents couldn't get me a phone. And now, I pay for all of our phones, and I don't mind it, but, yeah, it's like, they never got it for me. Also, my first job was at Mervyn's, and I hated that place a lot. I, like, quit after, like, a month and a half. Probably, like, less than maybe three weeks. I don't remember. I'm so glad that place went bankrupt. After that small time at Mervyn's, I basically had that, like, experience I can put on my resume so that my next job would be better. And then I ended up working at a Hakwan, or if you speak Mandarin, it's like Shui Yuan, or Hokkien in Cantonese, um, because I thought I'd be, I could be a school teacher. I, well, uh, going back on the thing where I have like a lot of interests, I was like, I could be a school teacher. I like working with kids. And then I also thought about being a social worker. And then like for political science, I thought like maybe that could be a possibility of me going to law school afterwards. So that was a thing. After working at the Hakwan, I knew I didn't want to be a school teacher because they get a lot of take home work, which they don't get compensated for. So I just ended up working at the Hawk One, but not doing like progress reports for parents because I hated that a lot and I didn't, it's not worth it to me. But my boss appreciates me there, so I've been working there ever since I'm still working there as I'm transitioning. So she really appreciates me and I appreciate her because without her, I wouldn't have like the money to pay for school so yeah um i'm so unlike some people that have student debt i'm lucky to not have that um when i had to pay like large amounts my mom was able to help me and i would pay her back like slowly after so that's why i paid for university what else did i say from my first video that no one's ever gonna see um so yeah, um, after I graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science, I didn't have a job lined up. That's one of my regrets from back then. So if you are a student that's going to graduate, pretty much the month before you graduated, bef blah, let me restate that, before the month before you graduate, already start looking for jobs because those places are most likely not gonna contact you until like weeks later when you are already graduated so at least you have like some time ahead for people to see your application um, even at that I've seen some job listings that are like posted like six months ago and they still are up and then it's like I don't know if they even like update that or what the heck's going on and then they do I had one that like responded back to me, but that was a position I didn't even want at the first at the first in the first place. So yeah, that was like just me applying for fun to see if anyone would reply in the first place. But yeah, so when I graduated, I knew I wanted a dog. I always wanted a dog, but as a kid I couldn't get one. So I knew it was the right time because I would have the time to raise a dog as I'm like finding a new job. So I got my Labrador Retriever and then I was like raising it and working part-time 
while looking for a full-time job. But then every position I applied for was incredibly competitive. So I had like, I tried to be a flight attendant because I'm multilingual. I tried to be a diplomat because of that multilingual part of me and that I have an interest in a lot of things so I thought that would work out but apparently I'm not smart enough to pass the first exam so I just gave up trying. Um, I could be a video producer because I had like a couple years of YouTube video creations um, before I graduated because I was like I'm not ugly I can do this <laughs> but yeah as you can tell I'm not I have like a pathetic following and I've seen like people at the same time grow from like my level to like 100k or something but at the same time I don't know I'm not into like the, the most like money making uh, commercially appealing part of that sector I guess the beauty and makeup sector um yeah so or like basically I tried to be like a social media person that didn't work out so I stuck with working at the Hawk one until I figure out what to do next and then my dog eventually got sick and this was like a not normal kind of sick so yeah, I don't know. It was part of me being stupid because I, although I did my research, I was really like internet dependent. And then I was like, I had like this rationality that I've seen homeless people raise dogs and their dogs lived at least like five years, which is already like the half-life of a dog. But my dog, I never took him to a vet because I didn't think I needed to. I got him his shots, which I knew was important, and I got those done at the shelter. But then going through school, I didn't realize that like fleas and ticks and mites carry infectious bacteria and things like tapeworm and heartworm and I'm not saying that that contributed to his death, but those are like possible reasons for it because when I rushed him to the emergency hospital after seeing how his like abdomen was starting to get really big, I knew it was something bad. So part of me felt really bad because I knew he was in pain, but I was just hoping he'd get better on his own because he had done that before. So, yeah, and going back on the whole like bacteria from bugs and stuff, I, another possibility is that he could have picked up some infectious microbe from like licking water off a, a lawn sprinkler or anywhere actually because um, Dogs are not super smart and they're gonna drink water from any puddle like any bird would so What I suspect my dog had was like some sort of peritonitis Because I knew for sure from what the doctor said that his liver was where The liquid was coming from which was inflating his abdomen So I think it was like a peritonitis which is the space between the abdomen and the basically the skin um, but yeah in school I learned that that happens to cats more so I wasn't really sure I don't think I ever know for sure especially when I look back now and I saw like his hospital bill it was all diagnostics it was like x-rays and just like fluids and training and that was it that was like thousands of dollars so yeah I haven't had a dog since and then when I was like in the hospital that day crying because I knew that 
I would have to put him down eventually. And I, did, I knew surgery wasn't, wasn't going to be like a viable option for me since I knew it was already expensive to already have him there. I was bracing for, for myself to like give the okay to euthanize him. But then when I was at work, he died the day after or the second day he was at the hospital. But the first night I was there, which was the day he was administered to have like overnight care, I was already like thinking about the possibility of working in an animal hospital and how to do that because of how the job outlook was after graduating with my bachelor's degree. So I found a program that was very reasonable. So it wasn't like a big gamble or like, what's the word? Like, it wasn't a big step to take because I'm not like signing up for thousands of dollars of debt. So, and when I was researching the school, it had a really high like pass rate. So for, um, for a licensing exam, because you're not technically like an animal technician unless you're like licensed. So when I saw that the school had like an 88% um, pass rate, I knew that, that they taught really well. And that's where I found out about like animal research being done because before that I just knew I thought that that wasn't even a thing because of the whole like PETA movement and everything I thought that wasn't like done here but it's actually done and it's like important and there's a lot of laws in place to like promote animal welfare so um, that really like intrigued me prior to me knowing anything about animal research was like oh do people just like inject things in the animals and watch how fucked up they get but that's not the case as i learned in school so i was really fascinated by how like animal technicians in it are basically advancing science to better the world and a lot of that is happening in schools so i i knew it was like a perfect way to like transition from working at hakwan into like an actual university or uh, any other research institution because they also teach people there how do people do this without obviously like drinking water not that i need it but i feel out of breath so yeah, um, I basically spent my f last semester in animal technician school um, interning at Caltech because I knew that that's what I wanted to get into. Um, I was hoping they'd hire me, but there's the position I want is like already filled there. But I really liked the doctor there and she was super nice to me. But yeah, I'm basically waiting for my diploma so I know that my transcript says that I graduated. So I can sign up to take that licensing, licensing exam that I just mentioned. Once that happens and I pass, then I know I have a more leg up into getting better jobs because I am like, I have the permission basically or the granted responsibility of using controlled substances. Um, for now, I basically just have that saying that I graduated, but I don't really have experience, and that's really annoying. My story is quite boring, basically. <laughs> I don't have, like, that life that everyone else seems to have, where they have, like, a tight, tight group of close-knit friends that are all super attractive, because everyone basically left me, because I'm not cool. I, like, I don't know. I get that people don't, may not have the time to, like, reciprocate the energy or have the energy to reciprocate but it's like when you give up I give up so here I am being the best me I can be and I can do it all I can do is like say like fuck y'all 
go have your babies, get married, do whatever you want. While I like sort myself out and try to be the best me I can be. And maybe if they like look at me through Instagram or not Facebook because I don't really update it, but through Instagram or my Instagram stories, they'll see like I'm awesome. I should have talked to him more. Stuff like that. I'm so boring. My voice is like a frog, I know. Uh, but maybe so much better if it wasn't just me speaking, but yeah, as you can already tell, I'm a pretty big loner. Um, but have you all seen Nicole Scherzinger and her man? Goals. So yeah, what is the takeaway from this? Hopefully I don't look stupid in my video. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways. So what's the takeaway from this, I guess? I guess from what I have learned is like never stop searching for what you like. If you're like my brother, he's like... All he does is play video games and I don't think he does anything besides that. He like basically just shuts the world out through video games and watching stupid videos and, and, and blasting audio sounds that with like the treble super high which is super annoying because it sounds like a movie theater but it's like nothing important and and yeah just never stop searching for what you like. I had many interests when I was a kid like I was always into art. I still like drawing. I don't do it all the time, but when I do, it was like, I, have, I enjoy it. I wanted to do design. I like fashion because I never had the chance to express myself through clothes in high school because my parents would never take me to the mall because they couldn't. And my mom would like not drive out of like a five mile radius from home. So yeah. I also like languages and I'm really mad that I'm not fluent in Korean because I've been into Korean music for like 17 years now. Uh, I'm also like an architecture nerd so I would like look at skyscrapers and be like oh I know who designed this and how what's the inspiration behind it and I'm like uh. <laughs> I also like watching like roller coaster videos online and I used to be a huge like roller coaster tycoon player and make like my own like park all the time. And, waste hours on that uh, and I'm also like a huge comic and movie nerd I'm basically just someone that took their trauma from their first dog went back to school and pretty much enjoyed my second time in school because people actually knew my name this time when I was uh, an undergrad I was like in my senior year only like one person ever called out my name in the, ha in the hallway <laughs> I was like, who, what, who would ever do that? That was like the funniest day to me because I was like, she was like, I'm calling you. I'm like, oh, no one calls me. So I was ignoring it. <laughs> like maybe they're calling some other Peter. <sighs> uh, okay, anyways. So yeah, I don't know. I'm basically using this free time between my Hawk One job and graduating and then using YouTube because I have something here that I want. I don't want to like lose out on, and I, yeah, I don't know. I'm a, a sort of an attention seeker, but not really. <laughs> um, but also, I also have like this thing where it's like I already put myself out on YouTube. I can only like get better from here. So when I see myself like all pudgy <laughs> from back then. I know that I've improved myself and I can only go up. So I call, hold myself accountable. Hopefully this research institution that I got inquired from eventually likes me. Hopefully I'm lucky enough that they like me or something. What One thing's annoying is that you can go to the best school and have the best like education and, and experience, but it all comes out to luck. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It all comes out to luck because it's like it's all on the hiring manager that if they like you or not, which is very annoying to me. So uh, yeah, I guess if you're all if you feel lost or something in school, just never give up. Just try everything you can, and you'll find your way. Um, hopefully, I I come back with like me saying yeah i'm working in animal research now 
I'm helping advance medical science and working with all these medical students and it's so awesome. I brought home like a, a lab dog, a retired lab dog, and here's my new pet. Um, but yeah, that's not a thing yet. So I know this ends with the question, how did I end up on YouTube? Um, I partially talked about it already, but I might do that as my next Pete Hub video, my next podcasty video. Um, but yeah, I don't know. As if you're not bored enough of my boring voice and my friendless self. Okay. Bye.